Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Comics in the Captain's Quarters. And now we are at the penultimate issue, which is issue number five. You can see it's dated June of 88 of the six issue mini series of Star Trek The Next Generation. And this is a good one. This is a good one, I must admit. Because the story has been getting more and more dramatic, leaving us on a real cliffhanger. And this cover really kind of says it all. Because if you remember, Q has somehow lost his powers, and he can't stand the thought of being human for the rest of his days. So he basically grabs Geordi's phaser, and he attempts to commit suicide. But of course, Picard wouldn't allow that, so he tackled him right at the moment when he pushed the trigger, and of course, Q blasted Geordi right in the chest with a phaser presumably set to kill, because it was meant to kill Q, and uh, Geordi was down and out for the count. You know, is he dead? Ooh, we will soon see. So this cover kind of depicts what's going on. We've got Worf and Picard sort of subduing Q. And meanwhile, in this very sort of... this <laughs> graphic, dramatic cover, we've got Geordi draped limply in Data's arms. And actually, Data's eyes are leaking, as you can see. Again, weird. He's not supposed to have any emotions. But Data here is crying over the loss of his friend. We've got Dr. Crusher and um, her son looking on. Tash is all upset with Deanna. And we've got Riker looking very much like Superman in a command uniform. You know? So it's a very dynamic cover. And it really sets the stage from what we saw at the end of the last issue. So, let's get right into this. Somehow, if you remember, the saucer section had disappeared mysteriously. Now we know why. Uh, but anyway, the saucer section and the star drive section are reunited for this issue called QFX. And we're at this moment now when they just realize that Geordi has been blasted with a phaser beam right to the chest. And immediately, things get odd. Because you know that Geordi and Data are good friends. But again, Data has no emotion chip at this point. He should, he's, he's as far away from being human as possible. And yet, what does he do when he finds out his friend is ostensibly dead? Basically, he flips right out. He flies into this rage uh, at Q, and he basically attacks him, <laughs> and he starts whacking seven bells out of Q, you know, for, you know, killing his best friend, basically. So Data needs to be subdued through all of this. And, um, you know, meanwhile, Picard's trying to explain, well, it was an accident, and... You know, he's actually defending Q. Q wanted to commit suicide, but, uh, you know, it was an accident. He didn't mean to blast uh, Geordi. And that kind of makes Data come to the realization that, yes, he doesn't understand why he's acting this way, and he's flipping out. And at this point, there's not much they can do. You know, things are the way they are. And Q basically says, oh, you should have let him kill me. You know, Q's now starting to feel... Um, guilty, you know, the way he tr he treated them, and also he doesn't want to live, he's got no powers anymore, and, uh, you know, he's trying to to say that it may have been best if, if you let the android kill me, sort of thing. So anyway, into the room comes everybody, basically. We've got the, um, the four mysterious humanoids from that ship, um, who were with uh, Regletch, if you remember, the guy that was stalking Tasha. So apparently they're all from her colony, you know. 
and they were put on this mysterious ship by Q. They didn't know how to run it. They didn't know anything about it. And Q tried to pit uh, these against the Federation. So that's a weird dynamic there. So they're not too happy with Q. Uh, meanwhile, Geordi's still <laughs> limp in Data's arms. And uh, Q's not doing well. He just got beat up by the android, so he's in severe pain. Uh, Jordy needs treatment immediately. So, you know, Dr. Crusher takes him to sick bay. And Picard says that basically um, Q needs help too, you know. Q needs to go to the brig, but he needs to go to sick bay first because, you know, it's the right thing to do. He's human now. We can't, you know, we can't just let him feel pain and whatever. And Q needs sorted out. But when Regletch sees Q, Regletch is out for blood. You know, he doesn't understand why Q lied to him and the and the others, the four others. Um, you know, he's upset with Q. He basically wants Q dead. And, and Q's quite happy with that, you know. If he's not going to let the android kill me, maybe this Regletch will kill me. So what happens? Regletch attacks him. And starts knocking seven more bells at a Q, you know, knocking him out. So he needs to be held back and restrained by Tasha. So Tasha decides to take him to the brig, basically. Him and the four others, they need to go to the brig. They're, you know, healthy. They're doing all right. They don't need medical care, but they need to be taken to the brig. But as he's being dragged away, you know, he says, oh, I'm going to come for you, Q. Don't you wait, basically, you know. He's fueled by revenge against Q. So Q basically says to Picard, well, if you're not going to let the android kill me, and if you're not going to let this Regletch kill me, then I'll take you up in the offer. He's willing to get medically treated, basically. So he gets sent down to, um, to sick bay to get looked after. So Q goes down to sick bay. And of course, Jordy is in sick bay, and Dr. Crusher's got her work cut out for her because she's got a lot of healing and helping to do, you know. And uh, just before he's taken down there, there's a reference made to um, the episode where Q, I forget what it was called off the top of my head. It wasn't Q Who. I can't remember where he, he, uh, he tried to convince Riker to, you know, have the powers of Q, which Riker turned down. I forget the episode off the top. It's embarrassing because I know Trek so well. Um, I could tell you what season. It was season one, and it was like the ninth or tenth episode. If you know, put it in the comments down below because I, I can't think of it at the moment. But anyway, Riker turned him down. But apparently this was a test for Q, this was an assignment, and he wanted to, this time around, try to convince the entire crew to join the queue through this experience, you know, which basically backfired on him. And as he's telling this story, he passes out, basically. So, um, Deanna tunes into him with her Betazoid powers, which almost looks like mind reading when they do it here. You know, we know in the show that she can only read emotions, but here it's as if she's reading Q's mind and, you know, says that he's just passed out. But every time he visits, he, he lacks judgment because he, he really is becoming more and more human just from hanging out with the humans so much, you know. So that's what that's all about. Anyway, they take him to sick bay because he needs to be worked on. Now, Worf has some reservations about this, so he privately says to Picard, do you think it's a good idea? And, of course, Picard says, it's the right thing to do. You know, we just have to do what's right. It's just what the Federation does. Okay, so meanwhile, in sick bay, like I said, Dr. Crusher's got her hands full. You can see in this panel she's working on Q. And uh, Data's reflecting he doesn't want to lose his friend, and his friend's in critical condition, and he, he doesn't understand his feelings. Again, his feelings, you know. Data's not supposed to have feelings, but he's feeling fearful and sad, and it's his best friend, and he basically loves him, and he doesn't want to lose him, and Wesley's trying to console Data through all of this. And meanwhile, poor Geordi is on death's door. I mean, he's, he's nearly dead. 
he's, he's losing life signs. Um, he's in rough shape. And Data wants to check up on him. And Deanna's honest. You know, she says she doesn't know if he's going to make it. He's hanging on, but he's... It's, it's rough, you know. It's, it's touch and go. So Wesley, genius that he is, says, Well, Data, I got an idea to get your mind off this. Let's go to the holodeck and play some hollow ball, whatever that is, you know. And it's Dr. Sun's orders. I think it's the best thing to do. So Wesley takes Data out of sick bay to, um, to go play in the holodeck, basically, to try and get his mind off Geordi. So, meanwhile, in the brig, in the brig, uh, everyone's in the brig. We've got Regletch with the other four crew members in the big in the brig, which here they don't call the brig. As you can see, they call it the detention deck for some reason. But anyway, they're in the brig. And look at, the, I mean, we've seen the brig on the show, so we know what it looks like, and we know what the energy walls look like, but here they're quite dynamic. You see these sort of electric-looking lines of energy that are holding each cell shut, so it's kind of interesting. So anyway, Regletch and his crew, the four others, are duking it out here because they're not too happy. Regletch is the leader. They're sort of accusing him of abandoning them when he, you know, left the Enterprise and beamed aboard where he left that mysterious ship and he beamed aboard the Enterprise, leaving them to their own devices. So now they start fighting in the jail cell. And what does Regletch do? He instantly knocks one guy out, kicks another guy in the head and knocks him out. So two of them are out of commission immediately. And during all this din, it attracts the attention of the security guards who start running to the cell. And uh, meanwhile, as he's beginning to attack the third person, you know, they tell him, stop, uh, we've got our phasers set on stun, and, you know, uh, you better be careful. So he opens up the security guards, remove the shielding on the deck to, you know, try and deal with what's going on in the cell. And Regletch takes this opportunity to kind of grab the two that he's fighting with and hold one hostage, like as a human shield, basically. And they start to escape together. And of course, the security guards say, you know, don't do it. We're going to shoot. You can't escape. And sure enough, the security guard shoots the guy right in the chest. Stun, mind you, but shoots him, you know, um, because trying to stop him from getting away. The other security guard reprimands him and says, you know, you can't do that. Um, you know, but they're, they're trying to get away. The security guards are trying to stop them the best way they know how. So now that this guy's been stunned with this blast, what does Regletch do? He reaches behind his head to grab this other guy and he whips the other guy into the security guards like that, knocking them off their feet, you know? And then he steals one of the um, one of the phasers, basically. So that the security guys are at a commission. One of the guys, the only remaining guy, says, "Oh, geez, you know that was good that you used us as a shield, but uh, now we can get out of here." And Regret says, "What are you talking about? We?" And he blasts the guy and finishes him off. Now we don't know if this is stunned now or set to kill, but now this guy is down and out too. So Regletch is on his own. He's escaped from the brig and now he's thirsty for revenge. He wants to get to Q, you know, he's mad at Q for, you know, putting them through this. And uh, if it wasn't for Q, none of this would have happened. So now he's escaped the brig and he's on the hunt in the ship for Q, which as we know is in sick bay being treated. So that's where he's headed. Meanwhile, Tasha's trying to get who you know is the head of security at this point. This was before Worf became head of security, but Tasha's trying to get Picard's attention. So she enters the bridge and Worf says, well, he's in the ready room and uh, he doesn't want to be disturbed. And this brings me to a very interesting panel because we've all seen the ready room on the show and Picard's got this round sort of a... Um, a porthole window where his lionfish is, uh, named Livingston, by the way. But look at this shot in the ready room. 
there's Picard standing by this huge tank. And it's not just one fish. It looks like it's filled with fish. And he's just gazing into this giant fish bowl in his ready room. You know, it's, it's amazing, but it looks nothing like it does on the TV show. This is far more dramatic and, and exciting looking. But anyway, Ricard is, Picard's basically just... He's thinking back as to whether he did the right thing. You know, he almost feels guilty the way he tackled Q and, and Jordy was shot and he, his own hand may have been on, you know, may as well have been on the phaser. That's how his mind is thinking, you know. He's starting to be riddled or filled with guilt through all of this. And as his mind is wandering over this scenario, he hears a big din outside. There seems to be some sort of altercation or wrestling just outside of the um, the ready room. So he goes to investigate, and basically Worf is trying to, ref, you know, restrain Tasha from going into the ready room. But Tasha's been trying to get in touch with him, basically, you know, and uh, she wants to explain that, you know, she's she's basically found herself, and you know, she's faced up to her deep irrational fears. She's kind of improved, basically, through this experience. And um, and that she's basically telling Picard that Regletch has escaped. And he's on the hunt for Q. So he's Picard sends Worf to the con. And her and Picard go now on the hunt for Regletch. Because he has escaped the brig. And onward. Once again... Back in sick bay, Q's going to be fine. He's doing much better. But Deanna, who is hovering over Jordy, is kind of upset with Dr. Crusher because Jordy is now not reading much life signs at all on the instruments. And as she tunes into him psychically, there's no life signs there either. So she says to Deanna, you know, all this time you were working on Q, don't you think you should have been working on Jordy? you know, trying to impose a guilt trip on her. But of course she explains she's she's done everything she can and now it's just a waiting game and we see, hopefully, that Jordy will be able to recover, but there's not much more she can do. And meanwhile, creeping around outside is this Regletch heading toward the sick bay, you know, to, uh, to enact his revenge on Q. Meanwhile, in the holodeck, we have Wesley and Data playing hollow ball, you know, and they're having a bit of a go at it. And once again, it doesn't really help because Data is still upset. He doesn't want to lose his friend Jordy, and he's just, you know, he's not feeling it. So, you know, they decide maybe to go back to sick bay and check up on Jordy again. And meanwhile, Regletch has now snuck into sick bay. Sees Q on the table. Now, they're all attending to Jordy, so they don't see this. And he sneaks up to Q on the table and threatens to kill him. And Q's kind of grateful. He says, you know, finally, at last, someone can put me out of my misery. But he, he doesn't want to get found out. He says, you know, shh, shh, keep your voice down. We don't want to get found out. Otherwise, we're going to be stopped. And sure enough, it's too late. Riker sees what's going on. He immediately goes to attack Regletch to protect Q. Regletch fires at him, uh, misses, we presumably misses, but no sooner does he fire and the phaser is blasted out of his hand by somebody. And of course that somebody is Tasha Yar. Tasha and Picard had headed to sick bay and blasted the phaser out of Regletch's hands. And meanwhile, Q is thinking through all of this, you know, everything he's done against these humans with all the, you know, the stress and the torture and the hell he's put these this crew through, they're still defending him, you know? And he admires that about humanity, that they, you know, they, they defend him and, and do what's right, basically. Even through all the past and everything that they've been through because of Q. So he finds that admirable, admirable rather, you know? So anyway, onward. 
Here we have Regletch has now been caught. His hands are up. You know, he's <laughs> he's basically been captured once again. But one last ditch effort. He immediately reaches down, grabs a phaser, because if you remember right, he had two phasers. He knocked his two crewmates down and he stole both their phasers, apparently. So he may have lost one, but he's got another, and he instead immediately holds it up to Jordy's head. And Jordy's near death anyway, so he says, okay, well, I'm going to put Jordy out of his misery, you know. Uh, you guys may not care what happens to Q, but you'll care what happens to Jordy. And just then, Data enters the room, and, you know, this is so dramatic. I can see this being an episode, possibly even a Star Trek movie. But Data enters the room... And he starts blasting Data, basically. And Data's walking towards him like Superman. He's unscathed. Now, I don't know how this is happening, because Data's not immune to phaser fire. We know that from watching the show. But basically, Data's being blasted with phaser fire. And he's just walking toward him as if nothing's ever happened. Regletch needs to be stopped. He's walking toward him, and, you know, he needs to stop this guy from uh, his assault. And again, Q's thinking, all this time they've defended me, you know, this, this human race. And right now we've got Data, he's defending me. Everyone's doing the best for me, even though I've tried to uh, cause so much stress and, and misery to this crew. I've got to do something. One last ditch effort to, to remedy this situation. So Q leaps off the table in between the phaser fire between Regletch and Data, and he gets blasted full force, set to kill, bam, blasted away, basically, as Data knocks the phaser out of his hand, and, you know, Tasha captures Regletch. But meanwhile, as they're looking at, you know, Data, not Data, as they're looking at Q, they say there's no way Q could have survived that. He's a human being, and that's, that's killed him, basically. Q sits up, says, no, I'm fine. Everything's wonderful. And it's like, what? Why? You know, you said you lost your powers. And apparently, his powers were immediately given back to him. During this moment of, you know, protection for the human race, that shows that this particular Q has some, you know, some good qualities about him. So he deserves given back to him. And um, he's fine now, basically. And as he disappears, he does one last good deed and snaps his fingers, bringing Jordy completely back to good health once again. And all ends wonderfully for this episode. Not necessarily on a cliffhanger, because like I said, it's the penultimate episode, which is the second to last. There's one more to come. But in this arc, basically, it's kind of over. We see that they are now finally on their way to that planet Feltos that they were headed to a few issues ago, if you remember right. So the last episode, or the last issue coming up, is going to be that visit, basically. So I think this Q storyline is finally over, as far as we know. But this was a good one. Like I said, a lot going on. Um, and we had death, but we had resurrection again, which is good. But weird, weird things. Like I said, Data specifically acting completely out of character in this episode, or in this issue. I keep saying episode because when I read it, it's like watching another episode in my brain, you know. It's so good, these comics. I just love them. So anyway, there you have it. Issue number five of the six-issue miniseries of Star Trek The Next Generation. Back in June of 1988. When I was just a 17-year-old barefoot boy back in that those days. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for issue number five. Or sorry, issue number six. It's the last issue coming up. And we'll see what happens then, you know? And if I can figure out how to do a, um, a sort of tagged, or not a tagged, a pinned video, 
I'll, I'll, I'll make a video and pin it to my YouTube site. And in that video is where I'll say like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any great Star Trek content. Because I don't want to do it in every video. I just, I don't like it, you know? Like I said last issue, you've you've heard it enough. Here I am saying it again. And I said I wouldn't do it. But uh, I'm going to see if I can pin a video. And I'll do it that way. But again, I'm just using my phone. So I don't know if I need a sort of a laptop to do that. But there you have it. I digress. Issue number five. We'll come back next time for the final issue in this series. And until then, enjoy trekking, crew. <laughs>